So let's start with a fundamental question. What is generative AI? And what better place to start than by actually asking two of the most popular Gen AI chatbots what they think they are. So when you pose this question to MATLAB GPT, here's its response. And when you pose the same question to the MATLAB AI chat playground, here's its response. So apparently, Gen AI is an AI that can create content such as text, images, and audio, and code that mimics the style of content that a human would create. So just in case you've never seen an example of the style of content that Gen AI can make, let me show you a quick example. We're going to specifically use ChatGPT, arguably the most popular Gen AI chatbot on the planet. We're going to upload a JPEG peg picture of a mechanical machine, and then we're going to ask ChatGPT to derive the equations of motion of the machine in the picture. Now in this experiment, we will chat only once. So let's have a look at the responses that ChatGPT creates. It seems to have identified, at least, that the picture represents a two-link robot. It's identified the two degrees of freedom. Um, it gets full marks for realizing that it needs to compute positions and velocities of centers of masses of the two links in the robot. I must say, it's, it's looking pretty good, actually. Um, it gets full marks for defining the translational and rotational kinetic energies of the first link. But then it makes its first massive mistake. According to the picture that we uploaded, this is not the correct expression for the rotational kinetic energy of link two. It simply isn't. It's wrong. And if it's any consolation, um, it also manages to correctly uh, define the potential energies of the two links of the robotic manipulator. So when I first conducted this experiment, I was amazed at how it was able to do many of those things correctly, which is why I was appalled at the mistakes that it did in fact make, which you know were very human-like uh, in their nature. I wanted to continue talking with the, with the chatbot. When I looked up from my keyboard, I was left wondering, I wonder what our, our uh, teaching academics uh, think of, of this new capability. Now, this certainly isn't the first technological disruption that we've experienced. We've had digital calculators being rolled out into high schools in the early 80s. We had software capable of, of uh, drawing Bodhi plots in the mid 80s. And look, the World Wide Web went mainstream circa early to mid 90s. And for the most part, we've been more productive because of these um, apparent technological disruptions. But at the risk of repeating perhaps the exact same words that were ushered each during each of these previous disruptions, this time it does feel different. Um, Gen AI makes cheating easier and more accessible than ever before. And I think Dr. Jason Lodge from the University of Queensland has summarized our concerns in one simple statement. And that is with Gen AI, plausible artifacts can now be submitted for assessment tasks that don't require any work on the, on the behalf of students. Now on the flip side, uh, Gen AI does promise to boost productivity in a positive way. It has the potential to create starting points for many tasks, which at the very least simply give us some, some form of direction on how we should proceed. And it kind of goes without saying that at the moment, any output created by Gen AI really does need to be critiqued and reviewed before you start using that material. 
Now, this sense of optimism regarding the use of Gen AI is certainly growing. Uh, Professor Ledecky from Vanderbilt University runs one of the largest um, MOOC courses on MATLAB programming. And he's of the opinion that Gen AI tools such as MATLAB GPT are absolutely going to boost productivity for MATLAB users. Now, in Australia, our federal government is also deliberating on best practices for addressing the challenges of Gen AI in education. TEXA is the name of the government agency responsible for the accreditation of university courses. And in one of their publications late last year, TEXA recommended that perhaps assessments need to incorporate even more components of self-reflection. Reports, if you will, that outline how tutorials and practicals done by the student in the class have been leveraged to answer the questions defined in the assignments. And look, that all sounded like good advice 12 months ago, but alas, we're seeing more and more examples today of Gen AI also being more than capable at writing reflectively. Teaching institutions are also starting to create their own policies around living with Gen AI. The uh, University of Technology Sydney, our hosts for this conference, have a very detailed document describing how teaching academics can adjust their assessment in response to Gen AI. Our cousins north of the border um, at the University of Queensland also have their own guidelines for creating assessments in the presence of AI. And what I found particularly interesting about UQ's analysis is this response matrix. They've listed six potential response actions, and for each response action, they've scored the viability of that response over the short, medium, and long term. Apparently, standing in the corner and hoping that Gen AI just goes away is not a viable strategy. So look, just summarizing a few points that we've covered so far. Firstly, Gen AI is here and it's probably not going away anytime soon. Should you be using Gen AI and if so, how? Well, that's a question that needs to be answered by you and your institution. Now, if, and I want to be very clear about this. If you do decide that you want to use Gen AI, let's talk about how the math works can help you. The three personas that we'll focus on today are the educators, the students, and the researchers. So how could Gen AI boost the productivity of each of these personas? Well, for educators, Gen AI can create curriculum and give guidance on how to change curriculum. Students will see Gen AI as a virtual tutor, providing guidance on perhaps how to write code. And researchers can use Gen AI to generate synthetic data and automate things like literature reviews. Today, we have three offerings that allow you to utilize Gen AI within MATLAB. Two of these offerings are chatbots, the MATLAB AI Chat Playground and MATLAB GPT. These two chatbots will have almost universal appeal to all three personas. And we also have an API that allows large language models to be accessed directly from MATLAB, which is something that we think will be of particular interest to researchers. So let's take a deeper dive on each of these offerings. Let's start with MATLAB AI Chat Playground. The MATLAB AI Chat Playground is a MathWorks service that we provide for free. To use it, all you need is a free MathWorks account. When you log in, you're presented with an edit box where you can submit your queries. And you also have a lightweight MATLAB editor where you can run and edit the MATLAB code that Gen AI produces. Let me give you a quick demo of what this chat playground user experience looks like. 
Say you're looking for some guidance on solving ordinary differential equations with MATLAB. Using natural language, you type in your, your request and submit it. And the chatbot responds with some commentary and some MATLAB code. To review and test the output, you can transfer the generated code over to the embedded editor, where you can run the code and observe its output. In the editor, you can also modify the code, say in this case, changing the damping ratio, and then rerun it. And like any good chatbot, it remembers the context of the last query. So you can continue the conversation with it. For example, say you want to know how to do a parameter sweep using different damping ratios. You type in your request, and the chatbot automatically again generates MATLAB code to help automate this parameter sweep. And just like we did before, you can click the transfer code button into the embedded editor and you could run the automatically generated code. Very nice. So we think that this MATLAB AI chat playground is going to be particularly useful for both educators and students. I mean, with this Gen AI tool, you can accelerate the discovery of MATLAB coding features and explore examples of how to apply them. Now, this MATLAB AI chat playground is good, but it's also good to have choices. And there is another MATLAB focused AI chatbot that you really need to know about. It's called MATLAB GPT. In November 2022, OpenAI released ChatGPT, and the potential of Gen AI was shared with billions of people around the planet. Now, when you log in to your OpenAI account, you'll now see an option of launching MATLAB GPT. The MathWorks collaborated with OpenAI in developing a dedicated GPT that specializes in MATLAB-related queries. When you submit a query using MATLAB GPT, the MathWorks website is used to enhance the standard chat GPT response so that the, the latest features and functions are always cited in the final response. 